My name is Robert Reidinger. I'm a subject librarian at Northern Illinois University. And the book that I chose to read from is Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. Through the lens of the world of Maycomb County that she creates, she explored in detail some of the darkest and most challenging subjects of any modern novelist. Race, mental illness, and the secrets of both family that's chosen and family of blood. It's a complicated world that Miss Jean Louise Finch takes you into. The part I'm going to read comes at the very end of the book, after she's grown and changed in ways that she could not possibly have imagined that long ago summer. And after she has finally gotten to meet the elusive Boo Radley. Neighbors bring food with death and flowers with sickness and little things in between. Boo was our neighbor. He gave us two soap dolls, a broken watch and chain, a pair of good luck pennies, and our lives. The neighbors give in return. We never put back into the tree what we took out of it. We had given him nothing, and it made me sad. I turned to go home. <clears throat> street lights winked down the street all the way to town. I'd never seen our street from this angle. There were Miss Mottie's, Miss Stephanie's. There was our house, I could see the porch swing. Miss Rachel's house was beyond us, plainly visible. I could see even Mrs. Dubose's. I looked behind me. To the left of the brown door was a long shuttered window. I walked to it, stood in front of it, and turned around. In daylight, I thought you could see to the post office corner. Daylight. In my mind, the night faded. It was daytime and the neighborhood was busy. Miss Stephanie Crawford crossed the street to tell the latest to Miss Rachel. Miss Maudie bent over her azaleas. It was summertime and two children scampered down the sidewalk toward a man approaching in the distance. The man waved and the children raced each other to him. It was still summertime and the children came closer. A boy trudged down the sidewalk dragging a fishing pole behind him. A man stood waiting with his hands on his hips. Summertime and his children played in the front yard with their friend, enacting a strange little drama of their own invention. It was fall. His children fought on the sidewalk in front of Mrs. Dubose's. The boy helped his sister to her feet and they made their way home. Fall and his children trotted to and fro around the corner, the day's woes and triumphs on their faces. They stopped at an oak tree, delighted, puzzled, apprehensive. Winter and his children shivered at the front gate, silhouetted against a blazing house. Winter and a man walked into the street, dropped his glasses, and shot a dog. Summer, and he watched his children's heartbreak. Autumn again, and Boo's children needed him. Atticus was right. One time he said you never really know a man until you stand in his shoes and walk around in them. Just standing on the Radley porch was enough. The street lights were fuzzy from the fine rain that was falling. As I made my way home, I felt very old, but when I looked at the top of my nose, I could see fine misty beads. Looking cross-eyed made me dizzy, so I quit. As I made my way home, I thought, what a thing to tell Jim tomorrow. He'd be so mad he'd miss it, he wouldn't speak to me for days. As I made my way home, I thought Jim and I would get grown, but there wasn't much else for us to learn, except possibly algebra.